Hello and welcome to this uh, lesson on how to create a custom lead field source in Salesforce CRM. My name is David Craig White. I'm the founder and director of sales training at David Craig White International and I'm also an experienced Salesforce administrator. To create a custom lead field in the Salesforce CRM, we go to the user menu and click setup. This will deliver the systems overview menu over on the left hand side where under the app setup menu we hit the tab on customize and we can create custom fields on leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities and uh, many other areas but we're going to start by using the uh, leads fields so we uh, we collapse the lead menu and then we hit the fields tab and here we are on the leads fields here are all the uh, the default standard uh, lead fields at what Salesforce has by, by default of course and then at the bottom here, you can see I've already made a few different custom fields. So to, uh, to create a new one, we just select new here. And there's quite a lot of different field types. Um, we can uh, automatically generate a number, uh, you know, check boxes, drop down menus, currencies, dates, etc., etc. I'm not going to go through them all here because there's, uh, there's obviously quite a lot. Um, what I'm going to do for this um, this lesson is just select a standard text box, um, which can contain a combination of uh, letters and numbers. So we uh, we simply uh, check which one we want and click next. And then here's our new custom field where we enter our details. Now the field label is basically the uh, the label what your um, your users will see. Uh, that will display on uh, all the reports, layouts, list views, etc. So I'm um, just going to call this a custom lead field. And um, once I uh, tap down to the uh, the length, it's going to give me a. It's going to automatically generate the uh, the field name, which is used for um, external systems. If you're doing any sort of integrations, uh, API integrations and stuff with Salesforce. So uh, I'm just going to rename that, uh, or just add an extra letter on there to make sure it's uh, not been used before. The length here is the, uh, the basically how many characters will, will be in the field. Uh, I'm just going to hit 60 for example here but uh, if you want to limit that or want to have that to be a, a certain length then you you can basically choose for yourself. The description is just uh, for internal usage. That's just an internal description mainly to be used by user and, and administrator. The help text. Now this is the text. I'm just going to type it in. This is the text that your users will see when they mouse over a little question mark icon which will be next to the field in the system. This is really helpful, especially if you want to, um, especially for new users uh, at your company, maybe new people within your sales team who are not familiar with your sales process or the custom fields you have. You can add some more uh, appropriate sort of descriptions here and lengthy descriptions about what you're looking for in this specific field. Um, once we've done that, I'll go and uh, display exactly what I mean and how this looks afterwards. Underneath, we've got the options to uh, make the field required. That means that somebody has to, uh, they can't basically save a record without adding a, um, you know, anything in this field. We're going to leave that unchecked for the test. And then also, is the uh, record going to be unique? Um, or could there be multiple values of it? On a text field, it's, it's probably not really uh, appropriate. But sometimes, like um, if you're creating a second email address field or something, you might want to make sure that you check this to make sure that the same email address can't be used twice uh, to create duplicate leads. Um, external ID, um, you can set also, um, along with the uh, API field name here, you can also um, give it a, a unique record uh, number or ID, as it says, for external integration systems. But I'm not going to go into that. Um, default values. You can automatically generate a number um, in depending on what field type you've created here, or you can uh, automatically have the field uh, have some default text in there. Um, I'll just put some here in double quotes, um, default text, and then when I create the field, you'll see what I mean. There's a variety of options here. Uh, some of them are using the uh, formula syntax, uh, otherwise just a simple text like this in double quotes. Um, again, I'll show you how this looks afterwards. 
So once we've uh, we've completed this area here, I'm going to click next. It's going to um, just confirm where I want to actually uh, add this. Um, there's only one option right now, uh, which is the lead layout. And then I, uh, you can either click save and new if you're going to create multiple lead fields at once, or what I'm going to do now is just click save. And if I go down here to my custom fields, I just called this one custom lead fields. And here you can see it's right here. There's a field name, the API name, what's been generated. It's a text field with 60 uh, characters allowed. So that's all created now and um, on the actual lead. Just before I, uh, I carry on, I'm just going to pop over to a, a sample lead. Uh, this is uh, myself as a lead in the system. I'm just going to refresh now because I just created that lead field now and you'll see that the custom lead field by default just goes in the first available place at the top here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my layout because I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I like things to be in the right place. So for example, uh, if I wanted this field down at the bottom here, then I'm simply going to uh, select it, drag it down here under the emails. Uh, you also have some options here under properties on the fields. If you want it to be a read only or you want it to be a required field, then you can check that there. Once you're happy with it, then just click save again. Saves the layout. And then you'll see the custom lead field is now here. So I can now uh, add some text. And then save. And there's my text. Now, the question mark I was talking about, what we created with the extra description, is now here. So you can see when you simply mouse over the field, then you'll be able to add a more descriptive explanation of that specific field. It's very useful um, if you're, uh, you're wanting to get some new sales reps up and running you know, quicker. Um, these custom lead fields are very useful for, for adding um, you know, answers to uh, typical questions, what you ask for prospects when you're qualifying them, you know, who, what solutions they have today, etc., etc. You can either add a description or you can add maybe the, the question what the sales rep should be adding, for example. Um, so it almost make, gives it a feeling of like some sort of um, internal sales training um, for the sales reps as well to, to help them get on board. Um, just a, a quick one now that that's already there, that's in the system, but what's, there's also a couple of important steps which you need to be aware of especially when you're working with um, leads, accounts, contacts, and opportunities in Salesforce. Now, when I go back here to the, uh, the custom fields, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a option to map lead fields. If I click that right now, then you'll see here's my custom lead fields. And what custom mapping does is it maps the field um, to the, uh, the account, the contact, or opportunity. But what we need to do first, as you'll see right now, is the um, custom lead field doesn't show up anywhere in any of the other accounts, contacts, or opportunities because we haven't created it. So what you need to do is make sure, I'm just going to click back, that you create the custom field either in the, on the account, on the contact, or the opportunity. Um, only one of them. Um, of course, because what that's going to do is when you convert a lead to an account, then you want to be sure that it's going to take over all of your custom fields. Otherwise, you're going to lose them. So if, for example, uh, this custom lead field was, um, you know, the, the, it was a description about their existing supplier, then I might want to um, have that information carry over onto the opportunity. So what I do, again, in the app setup here is I hit the expand drop-down menu on opportunities. I'm just going to right click the uh, and open the fields menu there in opportunities. And just for uh, reference purposes, I'm just going to quickly make a uh, the same field again. So you're just duplicating the process, but you're doing it on opportunities field. Custom lead field 60. I'm just going to write test. Test. Don't need any of these down here. Next. Again, it's going on the opportunity layout. Yes, thank you, that's safe. Okay, now there it is. So if I go back now to the uh, map leads fields over here, and I go to my custom lead field on my lead, this is the, uh, the lead information, then we should see that on the opportunity, now there is the custom lead field. So I select that to map it and save.
What you should also remember to do is, of course, go and um, go to your opportunity layouts as well and just uh, put your custom lead field, uh, again, arrange it wherever you want it to be placed. But now the mapping's set up, so that means now that when I convert this lead, whatever information I have in the custom lead fields won't be lost, because now this specific one will be um, sort of transferred and show up in the opportunity information when I convert my lead to an account and an opportunity. The one last thing I should um, maybe cover with you, I can cover with you right now, is um, also the uh, history tracking. Um, if you've got that set up, then history tracking, basically that, that allows you to see some history in the bottom of your, um, your lead data here. Um, I, I've not got it activated right now, but um, what it will do, it will show you changes what were made. So that if um, a telephone number was changed, you'll be able to see what it was changed from and to. Now, if your new custom lead field, um, if you want to track that to see whether that's been changed, then you simply um, hit the, uh, the lead field history and then you find the new custom lead and just check it and click save. And that's about it. That's, uh, that's how you create a, a custom lead inside of the Salesforce CRM. It's uh, it's fairly easy. However, you know a little bit um, a little bit of a lengthy process, but um, I can guarantee you that the you'll you'll be getting the one of the best features out of Salesforce if you start using the custom lead fields. It can be a fantastic way of customizing Salesforce to match the products what you sell and the sales process what you're working at your company. And also, like I said, it can also be fantastic for um, you know educating your salespeople and your users inside of the system with the little custom help feature there and explaining a bit more inside of the system how they actually use it and what you're expecting from their answers in the fields. So that was all for today. Um, yeah, thanks for stopping by and um, yeah, stop by next time. Um, I'll keep posting a few more of these uh, lessons soon. Yeah, take care.